Welcome to Embedded Programming. In this, our second episode, we'll look at Formatter, what it is, and we'll see also how to install GoBot and how to use it, how GoBot and Formatter pairs nicely. What are we going to be doing? Well, we're going to first talk about what is GoBot. And spoiler, it's a package for the Go programming language. And I'll try to answer why we would want to do embedded programming with the Go programming language. We'll talk about the motivation for Formatter. This is going to help us answer, well, what is Formatter and why do we need it? And we'll look at a high level illustration of what Formatter is. And that should give us an idea of what the benefits are. And then, of course, we we'll have to do the installation. Uh, it wouldn't be any fun talking about what Formatter is and the benefit of it if we don't install it. In order to install Formatter, there are two ways I know you can do it. You can use the Arduino IDE, which we already have set up if you're following this and you did the previous episode. Or you can use this command called GORT, and I'll show you how to install GORT, but it's optional, so you can go either way. Um, I had some problem getting GORT to install Formatter, but I'll show you it. It might work for your board. The other thing we'll do after we have Formatter install is, of course, part of this thing is really to use GoBot, the package for the Go programming language, and using Go to write embedded code. So then we'll have to install GoBot package, and then we'll write a simple Go application that can blink some LEDs on our board. And for this, we'll need to connect our Arduino board to the serial port. If you have some other type of board that connects over Ethernet and so on, it can work. And I'll suggest that you go check out the GoBot documentation. If not, wait until my next um, set of videos in which I'll cover how to connect to other boards that are not connected over serial. What is GoBot? Well, this I ripped directly from the GoBot website, which is GoBot.io. And it says GoBot is a framework for robots drones and the internet of things written in the go programming language again like i said before even though it says here go is a framework well that doesn't mean that it gives you a lot of things that allows you to write a program in such a way that it you know call parts of your application and so on we're not going to get into the difference between a library a framework and all this other stuff we're just going to say that oh it's really just a package as far as we're concerned uh, for the go programming language now if you hop over to the GoBot website, and here it is. If you look here, it says it's a next generation robotics slash IoT framework with support for 35 different platforms. Now remember all those embedded boards that I have? I don't want to be spending time trying to program them in different languages. So now we know what GoBot, the package, is aiming to do, but why a language like Go? And in my opinion, Go is a relatively simple and readable language. And we'll see that if you don't know Go, I encourage you to take my Udemy course, which you can wait until the end of this video and I'll put some coupons up where you can get it for free if you can afford it or you can get it at a discount. Either way, I still think that how Go is a great language for embedded programming and just a great language overall. Another thing is Go has concurrency built in. Now, if you don't know what concurrency is, well, I suggest you watch this video by Robert Pike, one of the designers of the Go language, and he talks about concurrency versus parallelism. And if you think about doing embedded projects, well, there are a number of things that you might want to do concurrently. And what it means is you might want to monitor for, let's say, a key press or maybe a collision or a door opening or a light going off or some detecting some sort of event and then responding to it and being able to write the code in such a way that you can write it concurrently and at least you can use concurrent design principles it makes it a lot easier and understandable this brings us to the other thing about i think about go it's a relatively easy language to learn now there are languages that are simple and readable People say Python is readable, and JavaScript is certainly easy language also and simple. But a number of these languages might be easy to learn, might be simple and readable, but they don't encourage you to write code in a good way. So 
um, Go has these things going for it. Now, enough about Go. If you want to learn more about Go, you can take my course or just look at the number of YouTube videos I have here. Let's move on. So before we talk about installing GoBot though, um, we need to talk about something else that GoBot uses and rely on, and that's Formatter. Now, the reason that GoBot requires Formatter, and trust me, I'll get to Formatter in a minute, is that when we write code in Go, for embedded board, it cannot run directly on the board. Now, when it comes to programming these different boards, well, there are a number of programming languages I can use. Now, some of these boards might support something like um, processing or wire or one of those languages that is sort of like a subset of C++. Um, some might support you know, multiple languages like Raspberry Pi. You can program it with C++, um, Python, and even um, Ruby and so on, but you know, um, and then BeagleBone, you can use C, C++, Python, and the list goes on. Almost anything, you could even use Bash Shell to program the BeagleBone just because it runs a full-fledged operating system like Linux. And it actually doesn't even matter that you know C++. Like, if you know C++, the way you write C++ for your, you know, Arduino, the library for Arduino, is a very different library for Raspberry Pi, is a very different library for the BeagleBone, even to control the GPIOs. So in writing pieces of code just to, let's say, read a GPIO across these platform, the C++ code is not going to look the same just because the libraries for the different boards are different. And so I would like to have a better way of doing things so I don't have to worry about learning new libraries for each and every board that I have. And so the answer is Formatter. And so what is Formatter? Grabbing this from the Formatter website, and you can get this from just typing Formatter in your browser and it's going to take you to the GitHub page. But basically, Formatter is a protocol for communicating with microcontrollers. Don't worry about microcontrollers there. Just say communicating with hardware from software. So it's a protocol for communicating with hardware from software that is running on a computer, a tablet, a phone, or something. The protocol can be implemented in firmware on any hardware architecture as well as software. Now, the advantage for us is that if we can get Formata installed on our different boards, we have raised the abstraction of controlling our boards because now Formata is going to be responsible for talking to all the different peripherals and features that we have on our board. And because it's a protocol, well, we can use a client library that then we can use from a programming language of our choice. If you know C++, you use a C++ Formata client library. And now it doesn't really matter. So now that we understand what Formata is, let's take a look at how we get Formata installed, how we can write a simple Golan application to control our Arduino, and then we'll see if we can't blink some lights and so on. That's going to be sort of our LO GoBot. Let's jump to the command line. If you remember, we left that where we were able to run something like this from our Arduino IDE. So make sure that you're able to do this. Now, my board is already set up and it's connected to the right port. And if you don't know how to do this, I'm not going to spend time on in this video doing it because I did it in a previous video. But let's just test that we're still set up properly. So I'll upload the blinking LED example. And this is setting me at all. Arduino is not optimized on my computer, but I'll ignore that. And it says done uploading. And you should see that I have an LED that's blinking every second and then off for one second. And I can sort of speed this up a little bit by making this go somewhat faster. Um, let's do 50 here and upload again. And you can see the blink and then there it is. It's blinking much faster. Okay, so that looked like it is still working. Uh, remember, if you wanna get back to this unmodified example, you go to file, example basic and then blink and that's going to open it for you so this says that oh, we're all set up now we need to switch to writing code in go right now you do not have gobot so let's start with gobot now from my illustration i told you that gobot is going to use the formatter library client library to talk to formatter that's running our book on our board but we do not have formatter installed yet. And there are 
two ways to install it. But before we do, let's make sure that we have GoBot install and then we'll go from there. So let me start because I already have my system set up. So that's, it wouldn't be quite fair to show you any problems you could run into. So let's start with a new system. So from the GoBot website, gobot.io, if you scroll down, you see that it says that oh, to get started, you copy this command. Well, copy that. And it says to run it. All right. So here I am on a Unix system. So here's what I'd like you to do. On your computer, I want you to create a directory where you're going to write this example program. So we're going to call it gobot hello, for example. The only thing you should do is create that directory I just created. And let's start writing a um, simple Go program by creating a main.go file. So you should be in main.go with Visual Studio Code or however you write code and ready to go. Let's start writing this and write exactly what I write. So to save us some time, I'll speed this up a bit. So what we've done, we have written a simple Go application which uses the GoBot library. And the application is pretty simple. It says, print a message, hello from GoBot. How often should I do it? Every second. So we call the GoBot that every function, giving it the duration, which is how often we want something to occur. Now, the other thing we can do to demonstrate that how this is um, working is that we can have another function that runs every five seconds that you know, checks a sensor, for example. So we can have multiple functions that are running. And this is where the concurrency that I mentioned that Go makes very easy. Now, all of our work is wrapped up in this nice work function, which we give to a new robot that we have created. Our robot can then, once we are ready, configuring everything, we can say robot.start. So now that we have our code written, we can create a module. Now, the reason why we want to create module, it makes uh, a managing packages and everything. Every Go program you write, if you know Go, always create a module file and give it any simple module name you like. Now, when we try to build our project, I expect it to fail because we do not have the gobot.io package. And so this is what you see. And that's why I wanted to do it from this environment that is pristine, because if I did this on my computer, it would work and that wouldn't really help you installing things and getting things working in case you run into issues. So now you run that command to install the package and it ran successfully. Now that it runs successfully, we can try rebuilding our application. And this also failed. So what is happening here? Okay, so I have made a mistake in the package that I am using. So let me correct that. So this is supposed to be GoBot, but I can assure you it still wouldn't have worked. But now let's rebuild. And there we go. We have our application built. And so we can do, type Go Hello. Now, notice for our application, we created a new robot called My Robot. Then I can stop this now because this is just going to keep running. But I want you to see something. We create a new robot, or we started our robot, my robot. It tried to start some connection, which we didn't define. That's why we put nil. We didn't have any devices, so we put nil also. And then it started the work that we gave it, which was the work function. Our work function said what? There are two other functions that we want to run, and we want one of them to run every second. And then we have another that runs every five seconds. And so this is an example of how concurrency help us write very simple program and look at what the GoBot um, thing has done for us, the GoBot package. Now, I can't really connect to my Arduino board because I'm running inside of an environment on another machine that's located somewhere else. But I wanted to show you how to get the package at least installed. So assuming that you've done that and you have that working on your computer, now let's return now to trying to get this simple LED blinking application working. Now, this is equivalent to our Arduino example that blinks an LED. Let's go through the Go application and see what this looks like. First, we have an LED, and we're saying 
GPIO give me a new LED driver. Why a new LED driver? Well, this stuff knows how to deal with LED and we'll see when we look at it, what are some of the things we can do with that LED. But give me a new LED driver and we specify the adapter we wanna use and which pin that LED is connected to. Now remember I said that for Arduino boards, especially the one that I have like the Uno, the by default, pin 13 is that built-in LED pin. And this works for the Uno, the Mega, and Zero. If you're using one of the other Arduino board, well, it might be on some other pin. In GoBot, GoBot doesn't care about your specific board. Remember, it's using Formata to talk to your board. So it doesn't really know which board is, you know, whether it's using the Arduino, Uno, or anything to know what the built-in LED is. All it knows is that with Formata, you can say, I want a new adapter. Adapter is like a connection to a board. Once you create a new adapter, which represents a connection to that board, now you can say which device or I want to control on that board and you'll use a driver for that, okay? And so if you work backwards now, we can see that by toggling the LED that's connected to pin 13 on this board, and this board is connected over serial using formatted protocol, we are able to control it. And all we have to do is say when we create a new robot is that these are the boards we're connecting to. As you can see here, we have a slice of connection. This should give you a hint that it's possible for you to connect to multiple boards at the same time. We'll talk more about GoBot, but at least I just sort of want to explain this simple code. So here's what I want you to do is now copy this code and let's go and start up Visual Studio Code. So I have a directory here for this episode called GoBot Arduino Setup. And this is gonna be for later, but I have a CLI directory and let's do this. Let's do code and we'll start it up in this directory. And there's nothing in this directory, so let's create our main that go. And let's paste the code we copied just now. And the only thing I need to change is this port that I'm running on. Now, how do I know which port I'm running on? Well, from what we did before, you should be able to figure out what port you're running on. So I'll cheat a little bit and I'll, I'll find my port number here and I'll show you how I install this application GORT that lets me figure this out, but now I have my port. I'll do this, paste it here. So again, we're going to assume that oh, we're trying to run this code, Go code, to talk to our serial, to our Arduino, which is connected on the serial port. So let's try and do it. Now we wanna try and run this to connect to our board. So go run, oh, I have to go into my CLI directory go run main and so if you look you'll see it how it's going to run and it says i'm trying to connect this bot on this port this is my connection remember i said formata is going to make a connection to this device on this board well it times out because it's unable to communicate with formata remember formata is a protocol so now we have to install formata and this is exactly what i want you to get is that your code is gonna to try to run and this connection fail. So now let's talk about how we install Formata. So we can do it two ways. We can go to our Arduino IDE, and since we know this work because our example blink should work, we can go to, then go to sketch, include library, manage library. When this comes up, what you wanna do is search for Formata. I want you to see formatted here, select the latest version, and I would suggest you go with this standard formatter by Formatted Developer, and just click the Install button. Don't worry about this Adafruit or any other one that you see here for now. Just simply do Install Formatter. Once you click Install and you close this, then you'll have, in the example, you'll have this subsection here called Formatter, then you can go and select standard formatter 
and just open this code and you can say upload and this is going to compile sketch and then it's going to upload it to your board and you can see it's uploaded to my board with the blinking lights there and after it's finished uploading it's a little bit big um so let's see so done uploading all right so now that i have formatted install on my board now let's rerun that application again a go program and notice that it's trying to connect and it says it's connected it now it has a connection it can actually start up the device that's connected to that um the device that's on that connection the adapter and then it's starting the work function and if you look you should see my led is blinking so my go code is still running on my computer what is happening though is that every time this says toggle led it's this device or this driver is rather using this formatter adapter to send the formatter protocol over this serial port to my device to tell it what to do now i said there are two ways you can do it through arduino which is how i just showed you how to do that or you can do it through this other thing called gort let me show you that now Somewhere in the documentation here, it's going to tell you about Gort, and we'll come back to looking at all these other platforms that you can that are supported with GoBot as we go through and play around with GoBot and do some embedded programming. But for now, what I'd like you to do is just simply go to Gort.io, G-O-R-T.io, and once there, you can hit this little. Um, play for this um, animated GIF to see what it does. But basically, once you have it installed, you can say Gort scan serial like I did, find the serial port, and then say that the board you want to install on, for example, is Arduino. You want to upload Formata and using this port, and that's another way of installing Formata. How do you get this installed? Well, it's very easy. You could just download it for your Windows, OX, and blah, blah, blah. I already have it installed. It's a Go application. But port version, I think, uh, let's see, I think it's version or minus V version. And there it is. I have it installed. So I say Gort scan serial. And so there is my Arduino. And just in case you want to know what else you can scan, you can just type the scan command. And you can see that scan USB is also serial, but Bluetooth and um, Bluetooth LE, low energy. And there's some other commands that um, come with Gort too, but um, you don't really need to worry about those. But for now, I want to say Gort, A R D U I N O, just like we saw, D U I N O, A R D U I N O, ah, can't spell, can't type. Oh, so Arduino, and then we want to say upload formatter. And I want to paste the port that my device is on. And so I run this. And according to, while well, that's running in the background, if I do this, it's supposed to start uploading the code. Arduino, upload, formatter, and then the port, which is exactly what I type. And when I press enter, it's supposed to say reading and then works. But this is now what happens. This has been failing for me every single time. Now, there's something else you can do. You can specify a minus B option here, and you could specify which type of Arduino board you have, uh, whether it's, you know, whatever. So I've tried all of these and it did not work for me. I give you this option so that if for whatever reason you cannot get the Arduino IDE to work or get the library, then you can just download Gort and this has everything you need in it. You just need to download Gord. It has formatted already built into it already. You don't have to download anything else. So that's two ways in which you can install Formatter. Okay. So we have Formatter install and we've shown that how we can blink an LED. So let's do something slightly more interesting. I've already shown you that how we can run multiple things at the same time. So why don't we have two LED blinking doing different things? What I want to show you is this little circuit design 
that I made. So the code for this is in the repository and it's called LED Sketch. And that is from this open source project called Fritzin. So if you go to fritzin.org, you'll see that our Fritzin is an open source free software that you know allows you to do board design, PCB layout, and all this other good stuff. So you can go download it. It's supported on Windows, Linux, Macs, all that good stuff. And you can look at the design. But basically, what I want to do is connect two LEDs to my Arduino. So let me wire that up according to this design and then go from there. All right. So after some fussing around with the board, I have my board wired up the way I would like. And so let's go to our editor again. And this time we want to change things slightly. So we have a LED driver and we know that we have a LED connected to pin two, and we have another one connected to pin four. So that's gonna be our LED. And let's call this LED zero. So let's call this guy LED zero, and this guy LED one. Now, both of these LED are on the same device, on the same hardware, so we will use the same format adapter. Now, every one second, I want to bink LED zero. And of course, I have to say that, oh, that's a device I'm using. So LED one also. So those are my two devices, specify. And we can call this multi blinker. Whatever name you want to give to your robot. And let's see what else. Oh, I want to blink them differently. So there is one piece of code that's going to run concurrently with this other piece. And this is going to blink every second. This guy, I'm going to blink it every 700 millisecond. And remember times that we're using the time package, so millisecond. So every 700 millisecond. Maybe this one, I'll blink it. I don't know. All right. Uh, well, all right, a couple of things we can do. So why don't we do every second turn it on and so if you look at led zero that and you look at the message the functions we have available you can see brightness blah 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 now OLED doesn't support brightness so this is not going to work but you know we can turn it on so every second we'll turn it on then we want to turn it off but we don't want to do this immediately because then our LED is not going to be on for any sort of time so we want to do is time that sleep and let's sleep for, I don't know, 300 milliseconds. All right. So that's it. Oh, this should be milliseconds. Oh, and not microseconds, milliseconds. And so here we have something that we're gonna, every second, we're gonna turn it on. Then we're gonna keep it on for 300 milliseconds, then turn it off. But since we're going to turn it off, the next time it's going to come on is when the next second is up. So it's going to be half for 700 milliseconds. And so this is actually the basis of something we're going to do much later when we use it to control the speed of a motor. So right now, let's don't worry about that, though. Just a hint. And then this guy is every 700 milliseconds, I want you to toggle the LED. And so this is going to sort of it's going to turn it on and off every 700 milliseconds. Um, and so we're doing two LEDs simultaneously, sort of. Oh, this needs to be LED one instead. All right. And so I think our code is ready. Let's run it. Simple change to our code and it's connected back. And now you can see, look at our LEDs. They're blinking independently. Remember what I said? This is why the reason I like Go is because it's so easy for us to say, well, blink this LED this way, blink the other LED another way. And you can imagine that we had other things. In the next episode, I'll show you how we'll use this button to control our LED. So right now, all we're doing is output. From within our code, we're saying do these things. But to the pins, write output, raise the pin, lower the pin. But we're going to learn how to read external event and take action on it.
So that's it. This is already way too long, but hopefully I went through it in enough detail that you should not be hung up. I don't want to rush through it and then it doesn't work for you. That wouldn't make any sense. So thanks for your time. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye.